Hello and welcome back to your favorite podcast, the Golden Nugget Podcast. I'm your best friend and your host, Anna Golden, joined by another one of your best friends, Kenzie. It feels kind of weird being here because, like, you know, I am a listener. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Honored. Well, I've told you this a couple of times and you forget every time. Well, it's like every time you say you've listened, I think you're saying it out of kindness. I would never do that. <laughs> you're like, listen to a couple of clips. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, I told you I do listen, but I haven't finished the 27th birthday episode one yet because I had to plan mine. Yeah, you're your own. 20. Well, you're 28. So 20, I'm 28, but I my last episode, it was a solo episode, my first solo episode. And honestly, commends to you because I remember remember one time you were like Kenzie has a podcast Kenzie has an amazing podcast and honestly I was shaking a little bit and Troy and be like welcome back to your favorite podcast because it's like maybe you came because you listen to Kenzie's podcast notice how I'm like the number one podcast in the world I've decided I'm actually gonna just start saying that like everything I do goes viral and then like eventually if you say it about a thousand things like three things will that's hit. prophecy yeah you know what I mean also that's I'm speaking, speaking in faith that's speaking faith that's speaking life and that's what scriptures told us to do Literally. so I expect nothing less that's why I say it's your favorite podcast exactly. anyway it's also like you can probe someone into <laughs> they're like it is my favorite uh-huh. podcast where have i heard that before <laughs> but i i'm like one time you came on your instagram story and you're like i need to do a solo podcast say i have nothing to say and then you're like i turned the camera on and spoke for hours mm-hmm. and i literally felt the same thing about my i was like i'll never be able to talk for an hour and it's like yeah. i talk for like six hours by myself mm-hmm. to the wall I could literally, like me and Carl, like, bah, 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 <laughs> and I have nothing to say, but I did 27 things because I turned 28. So yeah, it's like see, 27 things I learned in my 27th year. It always trips me up. You know, I'm actually, now that we're saying this, okay. I forget that you actually are a year older than me. Um, I am trying to like Anna Gold in my life this year. Wow. Yeah. I'm getting it together. So well, my you life have is together. So my yeah, life I'm is, literally like, you have sli- that, maybe too much together. That's actually the problem is that my li- <laughs> I've done ever I've maxed out on what I can do where I'm at. Sure. You said your next business venture is you're ready to be married. Yeah. Which I know is so many of the girls who like write in and all the things mm-hmm. they're like, my next goal is just like to get married, which honestly I was raised like my mom raised us of like, go for your dreams, do everything you want to do and then get married, then be in a relationship. And I kind of love that. Like, mm-hmm. I love the order of that. Because I think, like, with so many men, it's told to them, like, build your business, do your thing, and then take a wife. And it's like, as women, we're like, when is a, like, we're just going to get taken as wives one day. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like, what is this, the 40s? And you've, like, built such an incredible career. Thanks. I just have never, I've always wanted to eventually get married. I've just never in that moment wanted to get married, ever. I've really? never been the girl who wanted to even be with someone. The people... Like, in the past couple of years, this is how, like, down bad it... Not down bad it become, because okay. I'm actually... Like, I am not actually this, like, desperate girl who just wanted to get married, no, really, No, I've this, but, like, you changed. Like, your mindset yeah. changed. And, like, Dom always tells... My best friend Dom always tells me... I reference her in literally every single thing that I do. I know. love that you do that. I, it's like those people that say, like, mom and dad, and they don't say my mom and dad. Yeah. It's like mom and dad when it's like, that's your mom and yeah. dad. <laughs> But I'm literally like, like Dom Macy. And Dom I'm like, and- I just assume everyone knows them. <laughs> Anyways, my best friend Dom, I was talking to her about it and I was saying, I just feel so, we- it's a very foreign concept for me to want to be with someone. Be- sure. Even though I am a relationship girl, I've been single for a couple of years. Yeah. Give or take, you know, a few little flips in there. Things getting, that don't count. If we're getting technical. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I'm like, there's so many times guys have been like, that didn't count. So we can say it too. I say that all the time. And yeah. I say it so much that I genuinely believe it sure like, I forget. oh no i'll literally be like i was this long i was single before i got married and it's yeah. like maybe there's someone who's like hey i'm like no no but, like we dated and i'm like what who are you? Be nice to meet you i've been made and brand new washed in the water <laughs> i'm cleansed with the blood of christ <laughs> that's what i say that too. is yeah you you do it yeah too. But now, um, it really is a very foreign concept to me because never in my life have i been that girl or wanted that now I would just say, because I am open to it, I'm being dramatic and saying, I'm like, well, it's not, you know what I mean? Because I'm such an I, extreme person. I, it's honestly so crazy. Me and Kinsey met because of my sister. Mm-hmm. They're friends, Liz. And every time we ask, like, on Instagram, 
on the golden nugget podcast if you're not following go follow because we ask like questions like who do you want as a host and da, 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 da. and every time it's liz and i'm like i must talk about liz enough that people are so fascinated yeah. and can't wait it's gonna be a riot i'm sure when liz is on this podcast we'll definitely fight yeah. <laughs> i want to be in the room I, yeah i honestly might need to mediate yeah oh for sure when there's I a camera like out <laughs> Because that adds like a totally that, different dynamic. Oh, that would be great, honestly. Yeah. But every time Liz and I, like Liz would say something to what I'm doing, she'd be like, Ken, you and Kenzie are so similar. Mm -hmm. And I feel like even as you're saying this, I had a mentor of mine last year. It was like before Enoch and I started dating, it was right before like we went on like my birthday trip. If you don't know the story, we do like a whole podcast on our story. But anyway, and she was like, do you want to be married? And I was like, you know, I think this is like, the first time in life I like say I'm like I want to be married mm -hmm. and it was like I remember like praying the prayer of like all right lord like I'm open to this I think I was so scared of it I talked about this in my last episode too like commitment to me freaked me out I don't know why like first time I ever signed a lease I thought I was gonna throw up like anything that like made me like tie down because I love like options or like buying a home or buying a car and i'm like well what about that car like oh my gosh when i book hotels like to go on vacation i'm like well, what if i went to that one and it's like driving by all the other ones and i'm like oh what does that look like or if you're like walking down this is so bad uh, enoch i know i wear him out with this but like we'll be like walking to our hotel room and like the door will be open like house clean i'm like well that room looks like that should we have been in should we have been in that anyway it drive myself insane but i genuinely felt the same way like i was really career focused i was really like doing what i wanted to like following all my passions and then i don't know something changed and i was like oh no i, I want to share this with someone yeah i want to like build a life with someone that's yeah. what i want um but when you uh i mean Enoch edits this one but uh, when you <laughs> but when you and Enoch started dating you didn't feel like oh is there something else right like it was no. like, did you have that commitment fear I was so I so was convinced that this was going to be like even like my pastors would make the joke of like we're going to be on your wedding day being like you love him Hannah <laughs> don't run and it's like because I would always have a wandering eye sounds like I was a ski <laughs> cheat She's on committing people adultery. i know <laughs> like wandering eye sounds crazy but i think it was like i i wouldn't say i'm impossible to please but i say i have like really high expectations Same. and as as i think we should yeah i'm like I, i've seen a lot of different like people talk about on like podcasts or things like your expectations are too high and i'm like i don't know i serve a god of above and beyond <laughs> so i'm like i don't think he would give me less so my expectations were super high and when Enoch and I started dating, it was like, it kind of like blew it all up. Like n not in the sense of like, it blew up all my expectations, but like it blew them out of the water. Mm -hmm. Like all the things that I wanted, I knew I wanted someone who was like, I loved hanging out with, loved being around. I genuinely, this is like so stupid. And maybe a lot of my Christian girls, you guys will share this. I used to think that like, if I started dating a man who like loved the Lord, he wasn't going to be hot. <laughs> I, I actually like the lord yeah. would make me attracted to him like i would get a sweet <laughs> lover of god you know what i mean like so a therefore sweet he had to be ugly yeah like a sweet faithful <laughs> man <laughs> i don't know why and then like i don't know why this i pictured someone with like the lovely bone glasses <laughs> 100 and he has like the bible case yeah. that like zips and yes. it's a little carrier and he has the little dividers on the pages and he's so sweet to me uh -huh. you know and he's so sweet to me and he's sweet to the he lord he has like a bible backpack yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like got his shirt tucked in yeah. and a little belt and i'm like no like when me and enoch started dating i was like oh man i felt like there were things like secrets in my own heart that he fulfilled that I like had never even told anybody before. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just like blew that up. And there was never a moment, even through, I would say like my favorite thing too, when we were dating, his consistency never changed. Yeah, consistency is really it for me. And it was, it was the greatest, like, cause even we're doing another episode um, where we had like girls write in and what they want to ask the guys and the number one question was like why is the guy so hot and so cold why did the guy ghost me why did he act like he was in love with me for two months and then stopped and it's like i think every girl's had that experience and 
when you enter into something that's so great, like even with Enoch, you have the like low key fear. You're like, mm-hmm. I remember flying back from Georgia and being like, okay, like what if he just like changes his mind today? And it was less of like an insecurity in me, but like there's the reality of like, I don't know. It that, happens. Yeah. But it was so consistent and he was like so in it. And there was just never a moment where I was like, oh, could there be more? I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I hit the lottery, which it was like such a perspective shift. My, um, my issue is actually the opposite of that. <laughs> okay. So I have no issue with commitment. Okay. Wow. I am so like, if I'm in, I'm in love. I would say getting me to be in takes sure. a bit. Another problem I've had, I'm just, you know, giving you yeah, guys all my issues, spill. my issues, but I have that fear of someone switching up on me. So I previously have only ever dated guys who were like absolutely obsessed with me. Okay. But those are the guys that do that. Because they're so hot and cold. So I, which a guy should be obsessed. I don't mean like. Sure. I you, get, what, you you get mean. what I'm saying, you know? Like over the top, a little love bomby. Yeah. Oh, I, God, I love a love bomber. <laughs> but I just, it was so, and I would wait so long. Like a, I was always a very difficult girl to date at the beginning. Okay. Because it was really hard to get me there. But sure. I would do this thing where I knew I was going to date them, but I would be like play hard i wasn't even trying to play hard to get sure i was there the whole time but i wasn't fully all the way there all the way in Mm -hmm. so i would wait until they like proved their commitment to me and then i would do it um and i just feel like i was picking the wrong guys by doing that but my actual issue (laughs) that i've realized is i have fear and i think i've worked through it i don't know how much of a fear i have of this currently but i think in my in my dating history i have a fear of like being seen which is crazy because I am the most open friend ever. Like I will sure. tell anyone anything. I'm so, and I'm the one who will open up first to get everyone else to open up. I have no issue. I tell hundreds of thousands of people weekly on the internet. Sure. Every thought that I have in my head. But when it comes to dating, I do have this fear of being seen. So I've really dated a, like a couple, a lot of guys that have really, sure. it's always been about them. But that mm. wasn't necessarily their fault. I was subconsciously looking for that because I didn't want it to be about me. Because wow. I didn't want to open up. And spoiler alert, by the time I would open up is when they would end up being absolutely crazy to me. Like the amount of like Christian dating horror stories I have, I could do. We should do another we could podcast do a on saga. that. Yeah, we could do a whole. Yeah. Um, it's almost sometimes worse. It is actually worse because this, I will die on this hill. Okay. It is worse because there's like the spiritual element of it and then sure. they manipulate with that. And it's just Which like is a, like so a counter scripture, to be, yes. like counter, like Christian values. Any, I remember my first boyfriend broke up with me because the Lord told him to. Of course. And I was God's like. God's always saying that. <laughs> and I just remember like a little 16 year old me and I was like, I want to be like, shout out to you. I might've been 17. Um, and I remember saying back to him cause he was like, the Lord wants me to break up with you. And I was like, don't make me mad at God for a decision you want to make. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Go little you like, I, cause I just remember being like, this has nothing to do with, and you know, what's crazy though. Here's what's crazy. It's like, I look back on that and I'm like, you know, it really was the Lord that we broke up. And I'm like, maybe God did tell you, <laughs> but I'm like, even if, even if you're in a relationship, you're listening to this right now and you feel like the Lord's asked you to like move on. Don't tell the person that. Just be like, hey, this is the end of the road for us. I've loved being, like, you can do, like, in in a beautiful departure, a beautiful way, but you don't have to, like, make that person mad at God. Don't blame God for it. And what it does, especially to young, impressionable girls, is it's saying God doesn't want me to be with you. So it's saying... It's like, like, you're not worthy. Yeah, you're not good enough for me. Like, it's it's a very damaging thing to say. Even if you feel like God is leading you somewhere, that, whatever. I just yeah. think you shouldn't. I think that verbiage is damaging. The language is so... It's just like any of... All honesty... Honesty, clear is, like, kind, being clear with someone is always being kind, but that doesn't mean like I was using this example the other day with someone because we were talking about like ghosting and I was like, okay, there's, you don't always have to ghost someone. Like, let's just say you go on a date with someone who looks different than like their profile online. Okay. So they're a catfish. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but it's not like you're going to be like, Hey, you were way bigger than you. Th- I thought you were going to, it's like, you don't say that. That's crazy. You say, Hey, like, It didn't work out. It was great getting to know you. And I'm like, with the whole thing of like, you feel like the Lord asked you to, you don't have to give every person every single detail. Mm -hmm. You can just like being kind to them. It's just being clear about like your intentions, but you don't have to give all of that. I I despise that. I'll never support someone who's like, 
oh, the Lord told me. And then that's how you communicate to that person. <laughs> Unless you both have like decided that you're at a crossroads and you're both going to go to God about it. And then you're yeah. going to come back together and you're on a mutual ground of that. But oh my gosh, I've had so many weird things. I had like, I had a boyfriend before you guys, he would fast me. He would like, <laughs> wait, this was, you, he was, you were, the he sacrifice. would fast me. He'd be like, <laughs> I need to fast you for five days. And I'm like, what? And I was so young that like, I didn't understand. And I was like, oh, I'm like bad. Like you have to like take time away from me. Oh, so damaging. And I'm like, I, that's so crazy. Like (laughs) looking back on that, I'm like, that's not normal behavior. That's not like normal belief. But yeah, I could go on those things for days. And like with that being said, I think the best guys that I know are also Christian. It it happens in extremes. Yes. It's a catch 22. And also it's like. It's healthy versus unhealthy. And I think it's just. I just think it's more blown up. I say this about like even people who carry like church hurt. And we'll probably talk about yeah. stuff like that too. But people are never going to stop being people inside of relationships with the label of Christian inside the walls of a church inside the walls of a Walmart. And it's like, for some reason though, because faith is so sacred and it, it's supposed to be so safe that when something happens under that banner, it just feels way more raw and like below the belt. Because the reality is, is if someone like, treats you some kind of way and you're working at target you're like whatever you chalk it up to like humanity but if someone treats you type of way and you're working at a church you're like this is so vile this is horrible um and it's both humanity but obviously through the lens of something else it feels way more raw so even in the context of dating like when you date a christian guy you should expect more you should expect more value you should expect because that's what they should be striving for not saying that anybody's perfect but it is like a standard that we should hold ourselves to it's different like we should be more forgiving we should be like long suffering all the fruits of the spirit those should be evidence in our lives um but i think that i don't know you we can kind of pick and choose when it comes like dating and like being christian all the things but i did want to talk we'll get more into this i guess i love i love where we're going but i did want to talk about like your past and your history so if you didn't know anything about kenzie she is like social media influencer how did you start in all of that to be honest so i started on youtube when i was 16 16 i was young i was turning 16 actually so I was why did you 15. like was it just i just grew up watching youtube and i loved youtube and for the longest time, I wanted to start a YouTube channel, probably okay. from seventh grade on. And I started sophomore year of high school and I didn't because I was like scared of what people sure. would think about it. But then me, I me never starting anything. Yeah. But then I woke up and I realized I have never cared about anyone has thought. So then I started it. I was like, wait, you go, girl. <laughs> I was like, wait, that's a weird like excuse. Um, so then I started my YouTube channel. I actually graduated high school really. Like I moved to LA when I was 17. By yourself? Yeah. But I started, oh. I like went to college out there a little bit early and then I transferred. Okay. In. Where were you Because living? I saved money for residency. My roommate was going to fit him. So we were downtown. Oh, whoa. Which I actually downtown lived in like. Downtown LA? I know. I actually lived in like a great neighborhood like come, that really? I actually liked. I don't love down. I don't like, to, I don't even love Los Angeles, but I, <laughs> downtown isn't really necessarily the place you want to be. My specific neighborhood, really, I yeah. actually loved, like no one knows about it. it. Like, it's just like so hidden. I was the first person to move into this building. It was fun. Wow. It was a good period of time. Um, so yeah, I ended up moving to LA and then I started the podcast when I was 21, I think. And I you moved college. from Dallas? Yeah. Well, McKinney, like a suburb of Dallas. Okay. But you grew up in St. Louis? No, I didn't grow up there. Where, how, I, what, what's my, the connection there? My family is from there. I was born there. I moved to. I, I was grew two. up in St. Louis, and so like Kinsey, we have so much crossover. Kinsey knows like Emo's Pizza, which oh is like God. St. Louis style pizza. Shout out to anybody from St. Louis who knows what we're talking about. Provel, Provel cheese, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like super thin crust. That salad, I oh could have God, that so right good. now. I like honest to God could go to St. Louis right now, and I could just get a cheese extra 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 large emo's pizza and eat it to myself and then have another one for dinner for sure like they're actually, also like we have it delivered here we we order it to texas for our you're kidding stuff. like you can, frozen yeah wow mm-hmm. okay yeah i'm like but i feel like you could eat a large one of those because they're just like so thin it's like a cracker yeah like, <laughs> I know, it's like, like <laughs> i'm like it's easy okay so there's a lot of crossover when it comes to st louis so your family's from there you ever lived there 
I moved when I was two. Oh, so okay. no. But I've spent a lot of time there because all of our extended family, besides my cousins who live here, Got all it. of them live in St. Okay. Louis. So okay. we've done like all of our holidays, a lot of summers, a lot of I'm there all the time. Yeah. Not we, all the time anymore, but once a year. I feel like how you were with St. Louis, I was with Dallas growing up. Yeah, actually, yes. Because, like, uh, so much of our family was here. We'd spend a lot of summers here. My aunt had a pool. And it was like, my aunt has a pool. That's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> like, I was literally like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. The idea to have a pool was crazy. <laughs> but, um, okay. So then you living in L.A., you're doing content creation. When did it, like, take off? Obviously, it had to have before, before you moved. I, moved. I mean, take – I would never – I wouldn't say any of my stuff has ever, like, taken off overnight. It's never been a – it's slow and steady you would say it's now taken off well no i would say it's it's successful like okay. it's, it's been enough to she's like do i don't life. know i know i don't <laughs> i don't mean it in a fake humble way i just mean i never went viral like it never happened overnight which i feel like is way better well, i agree i'm because so, you've slow like slowly yeah. built like yeah i would honestly kind of share a little bit of that with i i feel like that for myself you're like i, I want like a little bit more viral but yeah no I never <laughs> i people all the time will be like man i just found you overnight and i'm like no do you ever just yeah, people who are like, like that years. Yeah. and i'm like no or even like at the grammys or i don't know there's like a christian version of the grammys <laughs> called the doves and it'll be like new artist of the year and it's like they get the award and it's like you'll accept it and I'm like well it's 10 years going. I don't know if I'm a, I'm a new artist to everybody now, but I'm not a new artist. I need to like witness the K-Love Awards. Like I need to just be there and see Oh, K-Love? It. I've never even gone. K-Love is like Christian radio. That's that's like I a whole I know what other... K-Love is. Like there's something about these <laughs> Christian shows that I just like need to go that's to. That's a whole different world. I've actually never been on like the Christian radio side of things. Are they not inviting things. you? That's such a crazy question. You're like, are you not welcome in that space? <laughs> well, I was I, just going to put it out there for you to get invited. No, Let's... I think... First of all, award <laughs> shows across the board aren't like necessarily my favorite thing in the whole world. Yeah. You don't like it's, a red carpet? It's kind of funny. <laughs> um, I literally feel so uncomfortable. I, there's nothing I hit more than a carpet. That's why I'm saying that. It's like, By the way, I was kidding. I wasn't being No, I, <laughs> just to I feel like if you no, don't know our friendship, no, but you guys I feel like get so it. many people would get No, I yeah. I think with like I'm so I guess in like the worship space yeah. that radio is really different not to say that like we've had some songs go to radio but i don't know it's looked kind of all different but as far as that it's a lot of like talking about yourself a lot of press i think because i did so much of that growing up that now i'm just like uh i feel like i go stupid on the carpet mm -hmm. and i'm like so uncomfortable but it's so awkward it's so it's honestly so awkward and people expect you to just be like bah, 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 bah. i was watching like all these interviews of blake lively last night on like the deadpool carpet i literally love her so much me too she could do no wrong but i was like you make everybody feel special mm -hmm. and i was like i need to be like that on a carpet it's like i'm nothing like blake lively but i think you have to like mentally prepare for weeks at a time sure also people want to talk to the most important person on the carpet and mm. it's like not that i i find so much value in myself i like praise the lord i'm never the most Same. important person <laughs> on the carpet <laughs> like does that make sense yeah. i'm like i'm not nominated for artist of the year so people are like move over so and so is here and i'm like i never wanted this like i didn't want to be here i didn't want to feel like this <laughs> like yep. those moments are kind of crazy <laughs> anyway i'm like everything's fine i'm fine okay so <laughs> It like was there a moment that you remember like oh now I'm actually doing this as a career? There was a routine video that hit probably like two million views, and at the time that was crazy because videos weren't get this is ten years ago, so videos sure. weren't really getting millions yeah. of views. Um, and that really started my the growth on my channel. I was making obviously more, or not obviously I guess I was making more money than I was making at like the pizza shop that I worked at. Yeah. So I quickly was like, oh, YouTube is it and <laughs> you're I like up oh, yeah. all right it's There's, like that one girl that's like blown up and it's like viral and she's like moved to la yeah the hawk to a girl yeah i'm mean, not allowed to say that on this podcast well, sorry the girl who went viral for a barstool video yeah it was like it's very she like made like a bad joke anyway all this stuff <laughs> but she literally like moved to la and has like a whole content crew and i'm like that's all it takes now huh like one thing and maybe that's what i should be doing <laughs> Just Marcel videos, just seeing what you can do. <laughs> can you imagine? I would never be on this podcast again. But. <laughs> <laughs> I think about that all the time. I'm like, if I had no morals, I feel like it'd probably be easier to. I've actually, with a friend, we've been saying this. Like, we keep making jokes about like moral decisions. Yeah. And I'm like, I actually like now every day. I'm like, I'm so much more 
I, this isn't really the audience to say this to, but I'm so much more moral than I than I'd like to be. I think. Well, I you know? literally and I then think, I get credit for it too. No, people think I'm the antichrist. No, <laughs> like <laughs> I think that all the time mm-hmm. of like, there's decisions that I've made that I'm like, no one will ever know yeah. that I like had to turn this down. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, you know what? God sees that, and you know, God God rewards that. But I I literally am like, if I was a rat kind of person, I probably would probably look a lot different. And but, other people are burning me at the stake, so. <laughs> I literally that's so stinking crazy i yeah, honestly i get it it's yeah. like i would say in this era that we're in you just have to be so careful there's not a lot of grace mm-hmm. there's like especially if like let's just say like you misstep accidentally say something there's not like ah oh, it's like we're gonna clip that a million times and put it online i'm like oh my gosh i get so when i first started podcasting i don't know if you really, i was like so anxious about every single thing i said i was like well what if somebody doesn't understand that when i was saying that i was joking or if that was like that and i'll get like so in my head about the smallest and things it it robs you of your personality and suddenly you're not funny and you're not yourself and so no, you're not totally. even I yeah I'm the same one it drives me insane I try I, not to be because men are not like that men do not think about anything blind ever. blindly Literally. blindly just speak and it could be anything yeah. also this is my first time that my cat has ever been in the room if you're listening on YouTube you'll see him he's like at my feet and he just started licking my foot I'm like Carl what are you doing he's so perfect he's literally so perfect last night I had to give him a bath that was World War Three. Enoch was like, should we film this? And I was like, no, it's going to be traumatic for all of us. He filmed like two seconds and Carl like peed in a bath. Oh. He like started going to the bathroom. I felt so bad. Like I literally felt sick about it. And I was just like, <laughs> and then he lost it and tried to climb up on Enoch and ripped his chains, like broke oh. his chains. And I was like, oh my gosh, strong. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. I'm <laughs> like, okay, so you have been doing this for like over 10 years do you still love it i mean obviously you've broken into different markets now like your podcast you haven't always podcasted Mm -hmm. and then you have your own like company friend of mine Mm -hmm. would you say you still love what you do yeah i love i definitely love what i do i love podcasting so much i love youtube too it's I go in phases with YouTube where sometimes I'm like, all right, I've been sharing my life for 10 years. Like at a certain point, when do I share less? Do you ever get freaked out about that? People know so much about me. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. That's what kills me. I I feel like I don't even share so much, Mm -hmm. but when I do, and then I see people, do you do a lot of like in person? You do a lot of in-person events. I feel like I used to do a ton because we were doing live shows and stuff and I, and I do a lot. Now we're doing a lot of like community events and stuff. Um, but I meet people out and about, like, and that's when I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I put that on the internet. When someone tells you something about yeah, yourself. Yeah, and I'm like, I literally cannot believe I shared that. I, <laughs> I, that's what scares me the most. Yeah. Someone will be like, oh yeah, like, and Carl, da 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 da, the other day. I can't remember. And now I think with the podcast, because I'm just like yapping, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like talking about, the other day I was talking about like driving or something, and I ran into someone, they're like, but you don't drive anymore. And I was like, it like gave me a jump scare mm-hmm. and i was like oh i talked about like on the podcast that i don't like drive as much anymore it's like very minute but i feel like that would be that's my scare of like sharing things online sometimes i think it's definitely i mean i feel like the shift will probably happen when i get married because i won't share sure uh, that'll be totally different especially depending on the kind of person would you show your kids i don't i don't know it, it really would be i would never be a like vlogging them like that would not be it I just mean even like on Instagram it really depends on who I marry but who I end up with even for what I just feel like called to in life not to be like too Christian but I mean you know here I, I love am. it we're all here for it I just it's not going to be someone with a nine-to-five like it'll be someone who has a similar lifestyle yeah. as me and it's not I don't mean lifestyle I feel like you hear lifestyle and you think like money I don't mean that I mean it's just like a creative schedule yes a creative I, schedule where we can go from like city to city bop around like it'll totally be, it has to be that I I felt the same way like even with Enoch like his stuff is like remote or all of like his creative ventures like he can kind of pick and choose what he wants to do and creatively like adjust his schedule because i'm like now that i'm married my favorite thing to do is like go on trips Mm -hmm. with him see that's what i want i want to be and i'm just this is something that has actually been really crazy have you ever done draw the circle 
No, what is that? Okay, you should... Well, Jack and I started it today. Will you start it with us if I get you one today? Sure, what is okay, it? Okay, it's my favorite, like, devotional book ever. Okay. It's so good. I actually just finished this past 40 days. It's called Draw the Circle, I believe, like, the 40-Day Prayer Challenge. It's a purple cover. Okay. It, it's Mark Batterson. It is the best book ever, and I've done it probably 10 times in the past six years. Okay. Maybe even longer. I don't know when I went to college. I don't even know how old I am. Anyways, um, I... You're like, who am I? I'm like, who am I? Where am I? But it's incredible. And I just like the way he... Because I think, too, my issue... I mean, so many issues today on the podcast. <laughs> but in... Like to spill it. In, I didn't grow up in church. Sure. Like, I grew up in Texas. But even, like, my friends that I grew up... Like, my friends here are, like, the only unchurched girls in Dallas, probably. Like, sure. I didn't grow up around it. My family is always would say they're Christian. My parents are definitely Christian and definitely now. But, like, I didn't grow up going to church. Sure. Just, like, not practicing. Yeah. You, like, knew of it. But. Yes. But I started going on my own. Like, I took myself there. Like, there's a couple things in life. There's, like, two defining moments in my life that I just always think back to. Yeah. When, why, why did you do that? Well, when I was, like, five, I've just always had this, like, some sort of, like, desire for God, which I thought everyone had. But I, looking back now, wow. it was some... I don't know. I was just always really drawn to God. And I feel like I always knew God. Even before someone really taught me I just feel like there was always some sort of draw and I have this memory of I was at some hotel probably in like Frisco okay and I was with my parents my dad was there for work and there was like a bible you know how they have like the bibles and like the nightstands and stuff at sure hotels? yeah yeah and I just remember I really wanted my own bible so I like went and I I had my mom go take me to the store and I got like this red pebble bible that I had forever. I have no idea where it is now. This is so sweet. I actually love this story so much. It's very sweet. Um, and I just have always had some sort of desire, some sort of calling. And I mean, as much as I've tried to run in certain areas, and really sure. I've, I've made less of an effort to run than people would like to say on the internet. Um, and, you know, <laughs> my surrounding from people. But, but it's also like everyone experiences that. Yeah, totally. And you're going to wrestle. And I think that's actually important. I feel like if you've never wrestled, it's like I you think have to. I think not acknowledging questions, not acknowledging like when your faith is shaken. I, I remember I had a mentor tell me, and this was like so beautiful. She went through like a season of infertility and it was just really hard, like genuinely on her faith. And it was someone like we all look up to in faith. And she had called her pastor and he she was like, I'm not going to lie. Right now my faith is shaken. He's like, that's good. Cause when your faith gets uprooted, you get planted in deeper with deeper roots. Exactly. And I'm like things like that, that test you. And then you can just prove who the Lord is. Like, I don't think he ever runs away when we're questioning him, but we're talking to him about it. And I think that that's a big misconception. Like that's dishonoring. Um, and I don't think, I think he actually honors questions. You look at the story of like Mary and Martha in the Bible when like Lazarus dies and like Martha has all the jargon. She's like, where were you, Lord? But I know you're sovereign and you're faithful and you're true. And it's like, well, you could have been here, but I know you're great. And like, she follows it up with all this jargon and Jesus is like, yes, yes. And then Martha's like, but, and Mary goes, but where were you? And it was her that moved the heart of Jesus and then he resurrects Lazarus. And I think that there is something so beautiful and just like the raw honesty of like, yeah, but I, I'm, I'm not understanding where you were. And I think that that's actually beautiful. And it invites us to have deeper relationships with the Lord that aren't his surface level. Okay, pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, you're taking notes. No, so I'm like, like yes, writing it Martha? down. Um, that was like probably, actually that like passage in college was like the only thing I paid attention. Not really, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm like, really now we're going to get into Bible no, trivia. The only thing I paid attention to, no, that's like my, was my favorite thing. I feel like half of our lessons were on that. But yeah, I don't know. I just have always had this drawing and call. And then weirdly, when I was 12, I was with one of my closest friends ever in my entire life. I was just with her last week. Her name's Emily. We were 12 years old and we okay. were at this Sonic on El Dorado in McKinney, Texas. Okay. And we were talking we were in her like mom's minivan like getting our ocean waters and i just i was basically prophesying like what i was gonna do career-wise sure but i was this is before keep in mind this is i was 12 i was probably like what 1996 like <laughs> just kidding i was born 97 i know um, i'm like <laughs> i think that's the year i was born <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm 97 anyways um 
I was sitting there, we were talking, and I just kept saying, I don't know. Growing up, I would always almost make this, like, Teen Vogue, Lauren Conrad connection. I've never, I didn't even okay. know Lauren Conrad. Like, I'd never seen The Hills. Really? Laguna Beach or any of that. Still to this day, like, it wasn't, I didn't watch it, I don't know. But I liked that she had, like, I liked the Teen Vogue books, and I liked all that My stuff. sister loved The Hills. I see that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Liz love Liz is core millennial. Yes, she is. She really is. She is. Honestly, I share in more of it than I'd like to admit, but she loved The Hills and her music ended up being on The Hills, like the finale. Oh, I didn't know that. The series finale. You and guys was, have the craziest lore. The gold, <laughs> it's I, honestly I, so... I need the Golden Family It's so lore interesting, episode. but she had this song called Butterflies and it was like the accumulation of the whole series. And I just never forget, like, watch it. And MTV back then, like when it was massive to have your song featured on oh, yeah. a TV show. Um, and for MTV, they would put the song at the bottom and the artist. So it was like, it was a massive deal for her. And wow. it was a song called Butterflies. Anyway. That's exciting. Yeah. So Love the Hills. Love the Hills. I was just sitting there, like, that was the kind of stuff that I liked growing up, and I remember saying to her, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I'm somehow going to be on camera, I'm going to be sharing the kind of things that I like, I'm going to be talking to people, I'm going to be hosting, like, I was just saying literally everything, and I was like, I feel like I'm going to have a brand, like a business, but it was really, like, more specific things that I, like, can't say online, Sure, but it, that didn't exist then. That barely existed when I started. It really didn't even exist. Sure. It was like Bethany Moda, who was massive and no one. Yes, like, it really uh-huh. wasn't a thing. But like those two mem- like moments I always look back on and think about because I don't know. I just thought they were like very defining, but I didn't realize it at the time. Yeah, totally. I mean, you kind of just like prophesied everything that you would end up doing in life. So yeah. that's, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. period. She's a prophet. <laughs> okay. And then you, what was the context into which you started going to Bible school in the midst of this? So uh, I went to, I got, I'm a very extreme person. Okay. Okay. So like I'm, I'm zero to a hundred so fast. Sure. Okay. I started going to youth group growing up because Uh I was going through a very hard time. I had a very tumultuous childhood. I started going to youth group with some friends. Sure. Who I'm still friends with to this day. And you know, I go to church camp within a week. I'm dating the pastor's son. I mean, it's just like, she's fully in it. She's gotten that full. I'm so in it. I'm leading all, like we go to leadership camp. I'm the leader at the leadership. Like I'm leading that. Like I would expect nothing less. I'm it's so me, you know? Uh Um, so we went there. I had some pretty tragic things happen to me as a kid and we had a re and this was like a really bad experience at this youth group. And so I ended up leaving. I'm so sorry. And thanks. But I mean, whatever. Anyways, (laughs) I mean, I feel like we've all, it wasn't unfortunately it it's too much of a shared experience that you've had like a traumatic experience happen in youth group but it, the experience itself didn't necessarily happen in youth group it like got out in youth group and was made into something crazy got it. so i ended up leaving so it's so crazy i share that to say like i left texas mm-hmm. not going to church and i went to los angeles and i ended up in church That's you ended crazy. up in his school at the church well we yeah we get to that part soon so <laughs> my point too of like every time that i've kind of strayed or left like there's always something that brings me back in it's always like people Mm -hmm. um so i actually went to i was going to a different church and then i found out about this college and i was working for myself i was doing school online at the time by myself i was Mm -hmm. by myself doing everything by myself by myself by myself yeah i'm like all right by myself (laughs) okay um all day everything all right (laughs) all day every day for a really long time or for a year, year and sure. a half, two years, whatever. Well, I mean, that feels like forever when you're alone. Yeah. And I had, like, friends, but I didn't like being in a room where I wasn't learning from anyone. So I wasn't necessarily looking for school. I was looking more so for mentorship. But living in Los Angeles, that's pretty much impossible to get. And, it's, like, growth. Yeah. yeah. It was just very hard, and I really wanted to immerse myself in a community. So I ended up... Um, randomly it was november i was visiting a friend in college i randomly applied for this school i got in by monday that's just such classic Bible wow. college. i love it honestly enoch has like a shared story of that like he like showed up that morning <laughs> yeah that's it's kind of what happened to me and then i w- just said okay i guess i'm going and i started in january it was that fast wow and it was so random i wasn't even going to that church i'd never been to that church how before. long did you go two years the program it was two years so i actually completed it Wow. Some people would do four. Some people would do two days. Depends on what you yeah, mean. That feels <laughs> <laughs> commitment. Commitment can be low with those things. Was it accredited? 
Yeah, so I have my bachelor's in business from Southeastern. Oh. So it's, a, it's an SEU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like campus. SEU works with a lot of churches. A ton, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, at least you got that. I know so many people who have, and if you've done this, no shade. I honestly did a lot of like internships and things that were off the books with churches. I didn't get credited from any of them, but um, I feel like so many people do the non-accredited way. But now the fact that you can like mix it together is great. Yeah, and like you're essentially paying to work for these colleges, for these churches. Sure, it's like, like so you you need to get make sure that it's accredited some- <laughs> if you're in your college years. Like seriously, I mean, and there's if you don't, that's amazing. But, like, we were paying to work for them. Sure. (laughs) I always, uh, Maya, who was on the podcast a couple weeks ago, um, she goes to Southeastern, and then now she's, like, getting involved in some internships and stuff. And she was like, so it's kind of like I work here, and I'm like, the best way to understand ministry is to just be an unpaid worker. (laughs) I'm like, like, that literally is what ministry is. You're volunteering. You're doing long hours. You're just, like, learning people. I think – there's an expect sometimes there's an expectation that isn't met with a lot of people who go into ministry school because they think it's going to look a way that it doesn't would you say you had like a desire of like oh this is what i want like your biggest thing was like oh i want community yeah and also it's important to add that i never went to ministry it wasn't really it wasn't a traditional ministry school i never went to ministry school with the intent of going into traditional ministry sure so and most of those kids didn't either which is so shocking i spoke at an internship the other day and i was like who wants to go into full-time ministry and this was a church internship and maybe two people raised their hand out of like 40 Mm -hmm. and i was like okay so you guys are just wanting to pick up other things and we were talking about this the other day and another one of your friends that came in town i was like were you guys ever thinking about going to ministry? You guys like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I actually kind of love that. Like learning from a Bible college, but not necessarily wanting to go into like vocational ministry. And that was their intention with the school too. It was advertised as like a leadership college. Oh, great. So it was never advert. It wasn't for traditional ministry. And the whole idea is that, you know, everything is ministry. You hear this all the time. Yeah, You're yeah. going into different fields. Um, I learned way more through the ministry. I mean, through the internship than I did anything else. So that was actually like really, that I think was the most beneficial aspect of it. And there were parts of it that I loved. Like there was one semester there that I really had such a good time. Like we talked, I was with my friends, like I was in LA this weekend and I was with them and we just, oh, there's this one semester and I don't, there was some rough times, don't get me wrong, but there there was this one semester. I actually, I always say like you couldn't pay me to get back to that time and like get back there, but you could maybe relive that one semester, find some dimes and like the couch (laughs) and I'd go to the one semester. (laughs) It was just so much fun. Um, Yeah. So it wasn't like the plans were never to go into traditional ministry. I also think I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't be surprised. I just feel like I'm always so close to ministry with the, like the friends that I have. Sure. So I feel like I'm, I'm always around it. But yeah, it's not my thing. all of what you do and like to speak to a bit of like friend of mine because mm-hmm. it's hosting and it's all really community based oh it, and the whole like, thing is connecting people yeah and it's relationship driven which is really we i was listening to this study done by i don't know i don't know what this person would be that like guy church consultants that's like a thing and he was saying that they've done like surveys in churches and the number one thing people go to for church is actually community over like learning about the Lord. And I think that that's something that you do so much of is like connecting people. And I do believe as like much as you're saying, like it is a ministry, like Mm -hmm. connecting people, like loneliness is such like a lie of the enemy. Like it literally is. And it's, it's something that I've see churches do so well. We've had so many questions even here on the podcast of like, how do I find adult friends? Which is so crazy. It's so hard. Like once you're out of school and if, and God forbid, like what you're saying, if you work for yourself and you're not like with employees and like every single day, it's like, where are you finding friends? Like the gym workout class. And then like, you're trying to like start up conversation. Like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it is like, feels so uncomfortable, but I do think that's something that church does so well is it puts like-minded people in similar groups, like community groups, or like if you're volunteering in a certain area of the church, but I feel like what you do with friend of mine, even when you guys do like gatherings in like Dallas or anything like that, like it brings girls who are like-minded to meet other girls. And I wouldn't be shot. Like I'm, sure so many friendships come from yeah. those nights and like people coming together so i'm that truly is a ministry honestly thanks yeah 
If there was something you were saying that I was... Oh, I, every... Like, I have made the closest best friendships in my life all in church. The people that I am totally. the absolute closest with, that I would call sobbing, that I met... It doesn't matter if I'm at 12 or at 20, they're all from church. But you have a different level of depth. I think in those friendships, just Definitely. because obviously you relate on something that's like so deep and deeply intertwined to your identity. Yeah. But I've like the best friends I've ever made have always been in church. Yeah. And I would say like, um, this is something too, that I think a lot of questions come around. Like, can you have friends that aren't Christians if you're a Christian? And I'm like, I totally think that you can have people in your circle, especially I think you should invite people into your circle that have different beliefs and like walk of life. I think that like helps you grow as a person. But I would say like at my closest like inner table, probably not just because that shared faith of like depth and knowing that like okay let's just say I come to you with like the worst of the worst like if you call me and you're going through like a crazy terrible tr like tragedy mm -hmm. I'm not going to point you to anything but Jesus because I know that there's nothing that I could actually give you that's going to make sense or there's nothing that I could give you that's going to like aid like unimaginable grief or something like that you know what I mean and I feel like in times when you walk through like the hardest times of your life you do go to people like that because you know at the at the bottom of the line they're going to point you towards hope yeah which is like all we want like I, I want someone who's going to like give me perspective or just like st sit with me and remind me that like oh man this is actually could look differently I think for me too it's just you can only connect so much with people who aren't like in your deepest deepest thoughts and your mm -hmm. deep like they're not meeting you there yeah you know oh, yeah, so it's, it's like it's not even intentional i have i mean i would say like so many of my friends are not christian like i a very large majority but the people that i'm like calling like my brother passes the way the people that i'm calling yeah and, like, on the phone with are all them like the people you trust can't. your soul with yes exactly because yeah. like the other they even like they are doing am they've been amazing friends and they're like it's not like totally. you're any lesser or any worse or any better of a friend or worse of a friend it's just a different connection and understanding yeah and mm -hmm. something that you need and it's like we have the same perspective and right now i need that perspective yeah you know when did you start friend of mine and what was like the basis of it because you wanted to help like build connectivity and was it like primarily within women yeah so I it's actually funny that you said there's now I'm like thinking back to all of my like Christian like, what? times <laughs> like of these like random words that I've gotten and stuff and I'm like wow this is I like love actually that. Really, I love we're this, taking that out yeah um so I started a friend of mine in September. I really always wanted just home brand in general. A lot of our stuff right now is around hosting. I mean, obviously you host in the home. I love to host. You're it's an amazing our, host. Our favorite thing to do together. You guys should Literally. see what, what I walked into today. <laughs> <laughs> like we were filming a little house tour and there's like charcuterie, there's drinks out, there's all this stuff. Of course. No, she, of course. I'm like, she had no idea we were coming. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So uh, September I just wanted a hosting home brand mm -hmm. forever what I've realized because I'm so bad I need someone to come in like I need a copywriter to come in and like tell me what my mission is okay. because at the end of the day it really is about human connection yeah I just hate how cringy it sounds a lot of the time and like when it's written out how I sure. feel but that is what I care about is like and I care about like intimate conversations I care about I would always rather like sit on someone's couch and talk to them for four hours and, like I love people who are well, okay. I love people who I like when they're invasive. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. It's not always I love people who are invasive. <laughs> yeah, no. I like people who I feel comfortable. Like, I was with, like, a mutual friend of ours the other day, and they were just asking me all these questions. And it was, like, I la – like, it, it wasn't it, – it was totally fine. But, like, I like when people ask sure. crazy things like that that other people wouldn't ask because that's what I'm thinking, too. And I would rather just go there immediately. Sure, like, yeah, yeah. Rather, let's not waste time. Yeah, let's not waste time. I don't care about your favorite color kind of vibe. Yeah. You know? Like, I want to know <laughs> – yeah more about let's get to the t of it all really. yes exactly um so yeah i think at the base of the brand it really is about connecting people because pretty much every product is around that yeah it's hosting i'm like right now i have some of her cards these are like the dinner cards guys these are so stinking cute if you're listening on spotify or apple music or wherever you listen they're like the cutest prints and they honestly like look great on your coffee table we did like uh, a minute of answering them on where where's that gonna be posted instagram, instagram. love it <laughs> little reels moment <laughs> but i like some of these questions like what is a miracle that happens every single day or 
what was the first thing you bought with your own money? Like all these like fun questions. And I feel like the nature of friend of mine, I'm like, I'm not trying to be the comprehender to decide no, all please. this, but yeah. it really is like creating friendships that like mm-hmm. mean something. Yeah. And I think we're in an era where it's really easy to have a lot of acquaintances and just not be deep. And honestly, like to build on that, it's easy to fake deep. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Like there are so many people I know for a fact because of how much you show your life online, even for myself, who are like, oh, I know everything about them. I even think one of these questions was like, what was the biggest misconception about you? And I'm like, I think that people would actually be not that who I am is super different than what you're seeing on here, but it's like knowing me is different than like seeing me talk on my podcast or like seeing me at a concert or like listening to my music. And I think like so many of these like cards or like their navigation of like these questions just help you understand someone more. And I think that like the biggest thing anybody wants is to be understood genuinely seen and heard. That's like, that's absolutely it. The fact that like, so psych psych, what what word am I looking for? I think I just had a stroke. <laughs> I'm like, psychology says that like the number one thing we love to hear is like our own name, which is so... You know, a golden sister loves to say that. I Did Liz tell you the same no, thing? No, you guys have both said it multiple times. And no. I always say that. Like, you guys are the same. Because it's literally like... It's so true. The fact that that, like, all you want is to be seen. Mm-hmm. and to be understood and to be known and i think that's why like we're not really strangers or things like that it was kind of like earth shattering yeah. <laughs> like, like people are wanting to know these questions about each other um and it's just opened up so much of that and i've seen that like even when you guys get to do like live events and i'm sure that the, your brand's going to do so many more things but i love the heart behind it and i think it's why it does so well Thanks. of even like when people hear these cards or like just the intentionality of questions like we went we did dinner the other night and it was like two of my friends and it was you and your friend and then me and enoch and i was like all right we'll just see how it goes and i just loved like we sat for hours mm-hmm. just talking about whatever no, like, we definitely closed the restaurant out. like we should have lo- no we, we didn't realize 100 <laughs> percent. shout out to what is it, joey's and, yeah joey's we love you and we're really sorry oh yeah and, and you could have told us to leave but there, I think they were loving it too. But um, I just, I that too is like my favorite thing. I think like my favorite thing ever is like a midweek dinner reservation with someone, and we're just talking. We need to have like a weekly standing. I would love that. I, I really used to that. do that at RH. I used to live right next to Restoration. Yeah, okay. and I would just drive. Oh, I will walk we over do there. R and D or something. What is that? Oh, it's like another Hillstone restaurant. They just have sushi at this one. Ooh, I'm. I feel like all of the restaurants that I like love are chains. Oh, you know my favorite restaurant is Chili's. Like actually, a chain. get Enoch in here. I <laughs> like. I'm aren't Chili's. they closing? No, and I've got sent that. Wait, okay. Times, so so is it a scam? I think they're maybe closing a couple. They're not closing like nationwide. But like, I would all. I'm not a fancy like bougie. Girl. Shockingly, I think people. That's something that people would be okay. surprised about. I grew up with eight siblings in Texas. Like that was not, I like, we went for affordable dinners. I grew up too. And it was like red lobster and cheesecake factory. That was a night out. And Olive Garden. That was no, Uh, but I genuinely thought we were like living large. I, yes, I, I was like, Oh my God, this is so amazing. I loved it, but I just, I don't know. I just don't really, I don't, that's something that people would be surprised about. I think that you use like a little more low maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I say, (laughs) I say all the time that I'm low maintenance. Well, I say that. I'm like, I went to drive by this morning. And yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, there's some things. I'm like, yeah. maybe I'm not as low maintenance as I feel. But if I literally were to like grab Enoch and be like, hey, we're all going to go to Chili's tonight. He would literally like shed a tear. He we, would be. I went last week. We should go. Okay. We'll totally go. I, he would be so amped. I have one bone to pick with Chili's though. They used to the chicken crispers. Mm-hmm. They used to have like the beer battered ones. Do yeah. you know what I'm talking about? I do, and they're a little different, but I get the honey chipotle now. Okay. When I was a kid, I got those. See, I'm so bummed about those. Yeah. But like, I love their corn on the cob. So good. It's so good. I have gone on a lot of first dates at Chili's growing up in St. Louis. There was one in Fenton, Missouri. Mm-hmm. <laughs> would go, it was like off the exit of Sunset Hills, if anybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, all like, I think one of my worst date stories, I just have to say, one of my worst date stories happened at Chili's was this kid. I almost said his name. It's not. Anyway. It was like around his birthday. He loved cats. I loved cats. I got him like a cat shirt. And I was like, I'm going to pay for the dinner because it's his birthday. Whatever. Um, we get there. 
he like takes the little thing had just started like you can play games on that little console thing and he like pays for the games and i'm like okay so this is on the bill anyway and then he did like the two like the dinner for two and brought one home for his family like at, it got another meal it was going so bad i texted my sister liz shows up is there with us i end up paying for everyone okay then we like go to drive home mind you i like had been in a relationship for like maybe like 15 16 so i was like my first time like i'm like finally like a little cute and like i'm actually like gonna go on a date that's not like the kid that i grew up with and so we're on the way home and he like tries to kiss me and i was like how dare you i was like this was the worst date of my life and he was like you were so much more fun when you had a boyfriend <gasps> and i was like what <laughs> and then i literally was like give me that shirt back and i took it <laughs> You, that's a pretty crazy thing so. yeah but i was like not him paying for the games and bringing a meal home for his family paying for the games jail jail, jail. and two for 20 not us him and, and him and his homie at home it's uh -uh. two for 24 now too inflation stuff i literally that actually grieves me yeah it actually might be higher i i, I feel like it may be 30 it's probably like 36 dollars two for 36 it's honestly we could get into the economy if we want <laughs> <laughs> like if we want to keep going on that but it's tough. no it's actually so tough but oh let's say we can definitely go to chili's tonight but we'll definitely have you on the podcast more i mean if you want to yeah, you're please. like a podcast pro i feel like thank i'm you, literally you. we're just a you're baby over here thank you for saying that i mean i'd love to like get like you can fill out like you can rate mm -hmm. guys go check out kinsey's podcast <laughs> she's like if the conversation ever stops she does solo ones all the time what is your like hack for that okay solo ones all the time is a little dramatic i feel like whenever i go and look on your thing i'm because I was doing a little bit. I was doing them for a little bit. I am recording my first one of months tonight. Really? And dreading that. I don't know. I always <laughs> think I have nothing to say. And then I get on the mic and then I talk for an hour. A hundred percent. But I fear, even with this, I'm like, I feel like I started so many things and didn't really close them. Like, I feel like I do that all the time on podcasts. Like, I don't close my thought. I say that all the time. I watch my solo podcast back. And at the end of every point, I'm like, if that made sense. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know if this makes sense, no, but, but I, I feel think like it's just, I think it's like how you think. Yeah. But it, it's like, it's had a great, beautiful arc. You talked about like how you got okay, into good. everything. Okay, good. I did want to ask because I feel like it's so crazy. Like in schools, um, the number one thing that they said, like kids wanted to be like 10 years ago was like firefighter, teacher, mm -hmm. mother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now it's influencer. Mm -hmm. What would you give like the person who wants to be like a social media influencer, like advice? Oh my god, I don't even know. It, it really. Or would you just tell him to not? <laughs> I hope it's. I think you know what like, I think don't it go is. For it. I think it's our generation's version of being a Disney Channel star. Sure. And everyone grows out of it, and you don't end up wanting that. Really? I think instead they're paying attention to influencers over Disney Channel stars, maybe, and that's what it is. Yeah. Because we all wanted to be like, oh, like doing the, you know. I mean, you guys literally. Like, oh, well. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I mean, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, I don't I don't know. I mean, if there's a kid, if there's a kid, I honestly would be like. Probably not. Do something else. <laughs> like, do you, I feel this, and I don't want my kids to be like, I don't know, weird. But I like don't want my kids to have phones. I don't want my kids to have phones. I don't want my kids to. I want my, my only want my kids to have wooden toys. <laughs> Are you gonna do one of those like sad moms with like the, the everything's beige? Yeah, beige mom. I I think that they'll have their toys in cupboards. Yeah. I'm like, why did what did we lose that? Why did the toys have to be on like clear shelves? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the toys will be hidden. I know. I think I do love wooden toys though. <laughs> they look way cuter. They're I feel like the kids have to like them more. They're so and it gives you they have to have more imagination. I'm yeah. like the thing with like lights and it's Monastery. like swirling and stuff. I'm like, they haven't had to think anything with that. We say that and our kids will be wearing like matching Paw Paw Patrol shirts and like, and, I mean, and, and, like, kids and, and be them. wearing like those <laughs> Apple like headphones. <laughs> they're not even going to be iPad kids. They're going to be VR kids. <laughs> <laughs> they're like not even with us. Cause that's, I've literally, I was talking to one of my friends the other day. His kids. He's like, yeah, everybody's like, Oh, I'm not going to be the iPad parent. And it's like, you have a kid that's going crazy at a restaurant and tell me you're not going to throw an iPad in front of no. I'm going to tell you right now, I will be an iPad parent. Yeah, well, I feel that. Yeah. Uh, like, as much as you say you're not going to, it, that you will end up. It's, I, it's like also like when that kid, they have to know what to talk about with their friends. Yeah. That like, there's this little show called Miss Rachel. Oh, I know all about Miss Rachel. You know Miss Rachel? Of course. I have nieces First of all, she's a billionaire, has to be. No, here's the thing about Miss Rachel. Every kid I meet talks about Miss Rachel like they're Oprah. 
it's crazy to me that Miss Rachel, she must really just be in it for very pure, wholesome reasons. Really? Because there should be a lot more merch. There should be more product lines. There should be, she should literally have a theme park. She should have so many different we things. We need to help Miss Rachel. She, no, literally, I can console. Like, she should have a universal. Like, seriously, she's so big. People she's, do not realize how big she is. She's getting, like, hundreds of millions of views on a video. Which, I mean, like... Insane. How much money is she making from that? Uh, m- millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. She, Hundreds like, of millions of dollars. Totally. She... I was literally walking by, like, a little class of kids, and they were all talking about Miss Rachel. Oh, yeah. And I was like, it was like a Sunday morning at church. And then one of the kids like pulled on the parents' leg and was like, can I watch Miss Rachel? And I was like, who is Miss Rachel? And it, it was a whole fascinating thing. Also, kids opening like toys on oh, YouTube. Oh, my God. So much money. We should actually like consider getting into that. I mean, I feel like that'd be cr- weird for just, us to do that, right? No, well, they don't have to know it's us because it's just hands. Like, if we want this house on Nantucket, <laughs> here's, the here's the thing. If we want this house on Nantucket, think See? about this. I have this vision for our lives. Okay. okay? Love it. Please. I find someone. Which Love it. Hopefully, which we you do that will. soon. Yeah. You will. Maybe you and Enoch can start a little prayer circle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Us together. Yeah. yeah thank if you. anybody knows anybody for Kinsey, let us know. Yeah. Thank you. They have to be. Um, my other issue. Yeah. Like, obviously, I, this is what I was going to say before. I've always had a hard time connecting with people in the church, even though that's where all my closest friends have come from. Okay. Be- not always. I just have never fit that, like, Southern conservative Christian mold. So hmm. it's always been a little, like, hit or miss or whatever. And I love those people. It's just, like, Sure, whatever. sure, sure. I have a very, like, not specific in the way of, like, I think, like, I, don't I know think you'll be able to find someone. I feel you but be I need nervous. Someone that who has a specific, like I need someone who has like a similar perspective on faith that I have. Sure. And I feel like it's I don't come across them that often, so that's my fear. Here's what I'll say, and I, people ask me this all the time too, like how'd you find Enoch? I'm like, no one who's in a relationship is better than anybody who's not. It's just they just found someone. Mm-hmm. It's like, and it's like it's kind of like honestly a little bit like hidden lottery, but you don't have to know a lot of them. You just have to know one. It's true. It only takes one. You only, I know my therapist would say that to me when I was going through a breakup. She's like, you only have to get get it right once. And I was like, well, I've gotten it wrong every, every <laughs> time. It's only once. Yeah. I tell my sister that all the time. I'm like, you don't want to be the apple of everyone's eye. Just yes. one. You don't. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, it's so um, good. I don't even know what I was saying, but. Yeah. Well, I mean. Oh, sorry. Our Nantucket house. So I have this vision yes. that we have a house and we're going and we, we have, have to have an East Coast house. We have to. And we can have like five couples that sure. do this regularly. OK. And it's so gonna it's be, a timeshare. Well, the house is going to be big. We don't have to own it year round. Like We'll get it sure, like, every sure, sure. summer and it's going to be a massive house. And we all just go out there for however long we want that to That Airbnb there. that I sent you, that was like literally my hope and prayer. Yeah, exactly. I loved that. So I just have to find someone who's going to like fit in with the group. It's a big thing. I know. It's tough. You can't have the it's one gonna who's be like, a mutual. I'm going to, it's going to be a mutual friend. Like I'm going to be set up through people. I'm sure. Because I'm not on the app. So there's no other way. I know. That's I, not me prophesying. That's just me being realistic. <laughs> You're like, it's going to have it's, to be a shared person. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I believe it. I'm believing for it. Let's see it Thank by you. the end of the year. I'd love to clip this. Yeah, wouldn't you? I would. At the end of the year. And it's, it's like, like played me. at your wedding. No, it's me and New Year's. <laughs> it's no. Actually, it's like on the video. It's the end of the year and it's like New Year's Eve and I'm in London and I'm in love. Whoa, Amen. London, New Year's Eve and love. Okay, I, I'll, I'll I be wanna, there. I want to go. That would be fun. We actually should. What are you doing for New Year's Eve? Do you guys know? Um, I normally do like worship night. Okay, well. So you could be I ushering be in the year. Yeah, you could. London. <laughs> I love it. We can do Christmas in London. Who knows? Yes. And then I want to go to the holiday. Like the holiday is my favorite place ever. Oh, it's like yeah, an hour yeah, outside yeah. of London. I know it's like not a great place. Everyone's like, you don't want to go there. No, I do. <laughs> for like 24 or 48 hours. So anyways, okay. just like prophesying over my own life, laying hands on myself right now. Yeah. Everybody who's listening to this, just lift up a prayer for Kinsey. We're praying for you. And our Nantucket house. I had this, uh, one of my old hair stylists was so funny. And her dad would always send her this text like, pray for me and I'll pray for you. <laughs> So that's how we're going to end the podcast today. Pray, pray for, for us. us. We'll pray for we'll you. We'll pray for you. Okay, so at the end of, this is going to catch you off guard. I didn't tell you this before. At the end of every podcast, we do a golden nugget, mm-hmm. like a little nugget of wisdom. Like if you were to give every listener right now, sum it up, what would you say is your golden nugget? Well, you see, you did that thing again where you act like I don't listen to the podcast. I know. I like, I was like, I was like, I don't know if you get that far. Yeah. <laughs> I just assume everybody listens for two minutes and clicks off. I don't know. No. Them. 
I would say I didn't actually come prepared with one, even though I do listen. I didn't know it was going to be a thing. Um, as someone who is really bad at doing this, I'm just thinking about people who come to me for things in like their 20s all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like Golden Nugget, the best piece of advice I've ever gotten is in your 20s. And I feel like this is just goes across life. This is great. Leaning into the uncertainty because life is all about being uncertain. And I actually hate being uncertain more than anything in the entire world. So like this Same. isn't fun. But the times that I've had the best times in my life are when I'm or I'm in the healthiest places when I'm leaning into that. I love Whatever that, that means. <laughs> that's beautiful i think that's amazing i think that's great advice for every single person because you never grow out of uncertainty <laughs> like as much like you could be as financially stable as you ever thought you could be but like your relationships are not certain you could be like as certain in your relationships or your marriage or your family and then you're like looking for the next job opportunity there's always uncertainty that's like the commonality in life but Kinsey, we're so happy that you're on the podcast. We have a little gift for you. Thank Carl you. sat and listened, deserved his favorite guest, obviously. I, just, I feel like Carl, you know, Carl is what turned me into like a cat lover. He's so Carl sweet. Carl turns people. He really is. He's like the gateway cat. He is. He does like, he gets your feet wet. He's yeah. like, okay. Enoch said he would never like cats, but here he is. Yeah. But Baby anyway. One. Guys, we are so happy that you joined us today. We are happy that you decided to stay even this long. If you're listening, let us know in the comments what you thought. Go check out Kenzie's podcast. It's called, your podcast is called House Guest. Yeah. Your brand is called Friend of, friend of Mine. Yeah. Okay. And check out all of her stuff on Friend of Mine. It's literally so stinking cute. I can't wait to use all these cards. I don't know if they're a gift, but I'm stealing. No, they're a gift. <laughs> I'm I'm like, like, I love like this episode of QVC. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, of course. We're going to let them know. Um, but we're so happy that you're here. And we just want you to feel for at least an hour every week that you have some friends that are in your corner that are praying for you, that are believing in you. And this is just a conversation between best friends. We love you so much. And we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>